Hi, and welcome to this video on an introduction to neighbor joining, a method for phylogenetic tree construction. If you're new to this series, this is a series of introductory videos on phylogenetic tree estimation. If you haven't seen this and you're on YouTube, you can find a link to the entire series right there. If you are new to this series or if you're new to neighbor joining, and you haven't seen other distance-based methods like UPGMA, I encourage you to watch the UPGMA video in this series, which is also linked right up there. Okay, so let's get started. Neighbor joining is a distance-based method. It's a method for constructing phylogenetic trees, typically from sequence data, but from any sort of phylogenetic data. Let's first back up and think about distance-based methods in general, UPGMA and neighbor joining primarily. Distance-based methods start by considering a multiple sequence alignment. And the sequences that are aligned in that multiple sequence alignment, we consider any pair of those sequences, S sub i and S sub j. And when we look at that pair, we can calculate a dissimilarity between them. And we can calculate then a matrix of dissimilarity that has some measure of distance between the sequences in our multiple sequence alignment. We call this matrix D and we call its entries D sub i j. When we're doing multiple sequence alignment itself, we might have already created such a distance matrix in the form of guide tree construction. And for that, we might use something simple like the percent or proportion of mismatch between the sequences at all of the aligned positions. But when we're doing phylogenetics, we might want to use some more realistic distance based on a nucleotide substitution model. And if you're unfamiliar with substitution models, I encourage you to watch the substitution model video in this series. Neighbor joining is an algorithm that takes advantage of a particular mathematical condition called the four point condition. So let's, set, let's start with distances that obey the triangle inequality. So this is our ordinary distances that we run across in our daily lives, where the distance between two points is a straight line, and that is always less than or equal to any other distance that involves any super, any interposing point, J. That's effectively the triangle inequality. Let's add another point L to that. And now we'll get an inequality that looks like this, where d sub i k plus d sub j l is less than or equal to the max of these two sums. This is referred to as the four point condition because there are four points and it, it does in fact extend the triangle inequality. Distances that obey the four point condition are said to be additive. So these are additive distances. And you can check if you're unsatisfied, you can check that this does in fact uh, extend the triangle inequality by just setting j uh, equal to l, and you'll see the reduction immediately. If you're familiar with UPGMA, you may have also noticed some another feature of this inequality, and that is it resembles in some way the inequality that we see in ultrametric distances that we use in UPGMA. In that inequality, d sub i k is less than or equal to the max of these two other distances. Well, the four point condition is this same kind of formulation, except that instead of an individual distance, it's the sum of a pair of distances. But otherwise it looks very similar. Importantly, if we construct a tree, like this tree with four leaves, and we consider the path length between any two leaves, as the distance between them, they will obey the four point condition. So it's another way of putting this is that tree distances are additive. The path length is, uh, is just the length as we move along the path between them. And you can check this out for yourself and satisfy yourself that it's the case. Now, if you remember one, uh, an interpretation or an interpretive consequence of the ultrametric inequality, if this is uh, is the case, it turns out that the max that uh, two of these distances will be the same in the ultrametric inequality. The two larger distances will be the same in an ultrametric inequality. And the consequence for uh, for the four point condition, if we know that to be true of individual distances, in the four point condition, 
it's the sums uh, that two of them have to be the same. So if we look in a distance matrix, we can see each of the uh, of the components of each of the summed values is in a different color. So the red, the green, and the blue. So in this case, the sum distances that are red are less than or equal to the max of either the summed greens or the summed blues. The summed blues are less than or equal to the max of the summed greens and the summed reds and so on. Distance matrices, unlike trees, are rarely additive. However, if they are additive, uh, they would be, uh, if, if they do obey the four point condition, they would be considered additive. Now, because trees are additive and because uh, dist uh, the distances are, uh, are specified by a tree, it turns out that um, any one tree specifies a unique distance matrix. So one of the consequences of this is that um, if the distances in an input distance matrix are additive, it is guaranteed to yield the one correct tree. Uh, the neighbor joining algorithm yields a unique tree from a set of distances and key, it does not assume, unlike UPGMA, that it doesn't assume a molecular clock. It doesn't assume equal rates of evolution on all of the lineages that will appear on the tree. It also doesn't tell us the order of events in time because it does, it, there's no root in a neighbor joining tree. It's guaranteed to produce, to be correct, to produce the only correct possible tree if the distances that are in input are additive, but it often works well even if the distances are not additive. It is trying to keep a, a, a measure a measure of total branch length to a minimum, total divergence to a minimum. And it has, in computing it, it has a time complexity uh, that's cubic in the number of sequences. Uh, and so it can be used for a fairly large number of sequences and it's, it's reasonably rapid. It's uh, slightly slower, of course, than, um, than uh, uh, UPGMA, which is uh, n squared log n. Now, a key concept in this is this concept of divergence. So the divergence is a measure of total branch links in the process of neighbor joining, and we'll use it when we, do, when we walk through an example. Okay, let's look at the actual algorithm. We start with some distance matrix between sequences. We call this D, and this represents all of the distances between the sequences. We start with not knowing the structure of the tree. So we just represent kind of an unresolved tree as a star with all of the sequences being related in some structure, but we don't know the structure. We don't know the order. We don't know the links of the tree branches. It's missing all of the internal nodes. It's basically only leaves, and it's missing any meaning to all of the branch lengths. The distance matrix entries are used, but they're not used directly in the way that they are in UPGMA. Instead, they're used to calculate the, this net divergence Q. So every D sub i j leads to a Q sub i j for each pair among the n sequences. The Q might be a little um, unfamiliar, but the idea here is that we start with the distance between them, D sub i j. We multiply, in this case, by the degrees of freedom. So n is n sequences. Uh, because two sequences are being used in this distance, the remaining degrees of freedom is n minus 2, so it gets that weight. And then we subtract these values r sub i and r sub j. And those are calculated by this little sum, which is effectively, you can, if you just take one glance at this, and it's quite clear, this is all the distances to i. r sub j would be all the distances to j. So what we have here is the distance we're interested in, and we're subtracting all of the distances uh, for both i and j. And so that is the net divergence of this pair of sequences. Then we find whichever non-identical pair, so we, we ignore the diagonals, we find the off-diagonal elements that have the smallest value, these are usually negative values, and they are joined to form a new node, uh, and we'll call that new node U in this process. Okay, that's the first part of the algorithm. The second part is what do we do with that U? So we're not going to put it halfway between the nodes like we did in UPGMA. 
It's positioned to preserve the distance between the two points that we're merging, and it's positioned to preserve as much of the remaining divergence as possible. So this is the first step of this. How we calculate this, the new distances, the distances from our points that are being merged, F and G, so the distance F to U and the distance G to U. We call these delta in this usually when they're being set up like this. So this is the original distance, half the original distance, and then we adjust that half so that it is adjusted according to the divergence. So um, we're going to add a value if the net, if the total divergence in F is larger than G, and it will subtract a little value if the total divergence of G is larger than F. And then, so that we calculate F that way, and then we can calculate the distance from G to U by the remainder. And so this in, uh, requires that F and G are now at the same distance they were when they started. So we're at this point, we have positioned that node U, and we have our branch links to F and G, but we don't have a new distance matrix. So what we do then is we calculate a new distance matrix that has U instead of F and G. And for that, we just calculate these distances as the one half of the distance uh, from the original one plus the, uh, uh, excuse me, for, uh, one half of the distance uh, between the nodes we're losing. So we're adding those distances together and averaging them, and then we're subtracting the difference between them. And so this will preserve uh, as much of that as possible. And then the remaining matrix is then smaller than the previous matrix by one row and one column, and then we repeat until done. So let's walk through a worked example. And in this example, I'm going to use 5S ribosomal RNA from five different bacteria. This is actually the same example that was used in the UPGMA video in this series, so that if you watch both videos, you can compare the results and see how the trees are different. We start with all of the leaves, all of the sequences arranged on this star tree. So in this representation, the dashed lines are going to represent an unresolved branch. We don't know anything about the branching order. We don't know anything about the branching lengths. And so these are basically just emanating from a common, or, uh, common ancestor, but without any knowledge of how it occurs. The first thing we need to calculate is this divergence matrix Q. So we just take the, we, we sum the rows to get the, um, the R sub I and R sub J. And then we, sub, we do the subtraction on the equation one to calculate Q. Now I've removed the diagonals from this uh, because they're even more negative. And remember, we only want the, uh, the non-identical uh, ones. And I'm just looking at the upper diagonal. It's a symmetric matrix, so we can just look at that. And we can see that the smallest value is negative 170, and that's C and D. If we use the equations that were here on this previous slide, we can then calculate from two and three the distances between C and this new U sub zero and, the, and D and this new U sub zero. And that's here. And now I, I'm taking these and using those distances, now they're solid lines, meaning these distances are actually meaningful. And we have some other things to resolve. Now, We've calculated that part, but we still have to calculate the new distance matrix, and we do that using this formula here. We drop the uh, this the uh, C and D row and column, and we add in a U zero row and column, and we get something like this. Well, we get this. This is this new distance matrix um, here on the left, and uh, from that, we then calculate a new divergence matrix. So this is now Q, I'm gonna call it Q1 in the first round of this. And we can see now that we have actually a couple of choices here. We can either join B and E, or we can join U0 and A. And we have either one works, so we can pick B and E and join those two. We pick B and E, we go from that, so we now have this, and we use that same equation uh, to calculate the these delta values, and we now see 6.75 between B and this new internal node U1, and 14.25 for E and this internal node U1. So we now draw those, and we now have a little bit more resolution.
Now, if you look at this, <clears throat> you can already tell that we actually don't need any, no any more nodes. And right? at this point, we've got all the nodes, but we don't know the branch lengths here. Nonetheless, from this, we can calculate a new distance matrix, which we have here, and then immediately calculate the branch links from the equations on the previous slides. And so now we have this a sub a u2 distance, u0 u2 distance, and u1 u2 distance. And we simply plug those in and we get ourselves a tree. So now what I've done is I've, re I've removed the labels on u0, u1, and u2, and I've added in the branch links so that that can be seen. And we now have this tree. If you've seen the UPGMA tree using the same distances, it actually leads to a different topology. This, but of course it leads to an ultrametric tree so that UPGMA, everything is the same distance from the root. In this case, we don't have a root. We are, don't have the assumption of a constant uh, molecular clock. So these are more relaxed assumptions. The additivity model is a more relaxed assumption than the molecular clock. Uh, and we and this is the, the tree we get. I encourage you to look at both of these videos um, one after another and uh, see how much sense this makes. Now, for if you wanted to do a little bit of an exercise for yourself on this, what I would encourage you to do is take this and derive a distance matrix from the tree. Show that that distance matrix is additive in the same way that is shown on this slide, the slide here. You can see that the, the matrix is additive. And then you can also uh, compare that distance matrix that you get from the tree, which is the model, to the original distance matrix that was used to input this. Um, anyway, I hope that is useful and gives you some insight into the process of neighbor joining and the comparison between neighbor joining and UPGMA. Uh, please stay tuned for the more videos in this series. I'll see you in the next video.